The film begins with a scene of a ferry boat gracefully navigating its way through the vast ocean. Inside this boat, we are introduced to a young man named William, who is seen gazing out of the window. As the camera zooms in for a closer look, we can't help but notice his distinct facial features that set him apart. The narrative then shifts to a lecture being delivered by Professor Julian Reed. The topic of his discourse is the Neanderthals, an extinct species of archaic humans. The professor, with a rather condescending tone, dismisses them as unintelligent brutes and savages. He delves into the era of Charles Darwin and Sir Francis Galton, a time when it was believed that one's level of civilization or intelligence could be determined merely by their physical appearance. Professor Reed then reveals an intriguing fact. The only non-fossilized remains of a Neanderthal were discovered on their very campus by his superior, Dr. Godwin Thomas. These remains were named William in honor of William King, an Irish naturalist who was the first to recognize Neanderthals as a distinct species. As the lecture comes to a close, the professor proposes a thought-provoking idea, to use the DNA of William to clone a living Neanderthal. This proposal catches the attention of Barbara Sullivan, a medical doctor with a PhD in reproductive endocrinology who had been attending the lecture. Later that night, she meets with the professor at a restaurant to discuss the feasibility of this ambitious project. She acknowledges that the cloning process would be challenging, but not impossible. Curious, she asks the professor why he is so fascinated with Neanderthals. In response, he takes her to his laboratory and shows her two pieces of stone, one carved by Homo sapiens and the other by a Neanderthal. He believes that by resurrecting our closest evolutionary cousin, we could gain invaluable insights into our own past. With the green light from the university, Barbara and Julian embark on their ambitious project of cloning a Neanderthal. This endeavor, which spans several years, becomes the focal point of a heated debate within the university community, raising ethical questions about the funding of human cloning projects. The controversy culminates in the university president, Bob Claiborne, deciding to terminate the project. This decision comes as a devastating blow to Barbara and Julian, who have invested their hearts and souls into this project over the years. Undeterred, Barbara proposes to continue the project in spite of the university's decision. When Julian questions who will carry the embryo, Barbara bravely volunteers herself. The couple then decides to tie the knot in Nevada a few months later. Barbara goes into labor and gives birth to a healthy baby boy. The sight of the newborn, however, leaves the nurses in shock due to his unusual appearance. Upon seeing baby William for the first time, Julian rushes back to the university to announce the successful birth of a Neanderthal to Bob. Bob is initially furious at Julian for going behind his back and calls for a meeting to discuss legal action and possible termination. However, during the meeting with his colleagues, he reconsiders, realizing that the university could face liability for allowing the project to proceed in the first place. He also sees the potential for positive publicity if they embrace the project. A week later, a press conference is held at the university, where Julian proudly displays pictures of William, the first Neanderthal baby born in the modern world. Despite clarifying that William is not biologically related to him or Barbara, Julian expresses his pride in being a father figure to the child. The narrative then shifts back to William, now 18 years old, disembarking from the ferry boat. He and Barbara drive to a secluded house nestled in the forest near a river. After a heartfelt goodbye in which Barbara assures him that he is always welcome to return home, William enters the house where he will be living with his father. He notices the Neanderthal stone on display. As he steps onto the balcony, a couple in a canoe spot him and stare in surprise. Shortly after, a woman named Sarah arrives and introduces herself as Julian's new girlfriend. That evening, the trio shared a meal together. Sarah compliments William's hearty appetite, to which Julian explains that William's larger body mass and faster metabolism require 20% more calories than an average human. After dinner, Julian has a heart-to-heart -heart with his son, expressing his pride in William's efforts to learn and grow. Julian and Sarah attempt to teach William basic English and help him understand the nuances of the language, although William struggles with understanding humor and metaphors. In a subsequent lecture at the university, Julian discusses the public's initial harsh reaction to William's unveiling and their disappointment that he did not turn out to be the savage they had expected. 
he proudly shares that William has developed intelligence equal to or greater than that of Homo sapiens. He also mentions William's robust and adaptive immune system, which could potentially contribute to advancements in medical research. In the subsequent scenes that follow, we discover the reasons uh, behind Julian and Barbara's divorce. It turns out that Julian wanted to adhere strictly to scientific protocols and use their son William as a test subject, essentially treating him like a lab rat. However, Barbara strongly disagreed with this approach, viewing the lab environment as a confining cage that wasn't suitable for a human being. As time passes, Barbara gains custody of William and brings him to live with her. Julian continues to visit frequently and oversees William's education and interactions with other children, as well as his adjustment to the new environment. Additionally, Julian spends personal time with his son, ensuring they maintain a bond despite the divorce. A few years later, while riding his bike in the woods, William is confronted by a group of teenagers around his age who insult and chase him. However, to their surprise, William displays an unnatural strength and skill, easily defeating the bullies. The parents of the bullies file a complaint, but it is not taken seriously by the authorities. Barbara, concerned about William's actions, warns him against attacking others in that manner. Curious about his own identity, William uses a laptop at night to search online about Neanderthals and comes across descriptions of them as unintelligent and savage creatures. This adds to his confusion and internal struggle. During a day of playing catch, Barbara's new boyfriend, Ted Roper, is introduced. This triggers feelings of jealousy in Julian, causing him to become more distant. The scene fast forwards to years later, while in college, William takes a test but breaks his pencil due to his Neanderthal-like strength. After the test, a girl named Judy asks William to come to her house and help her study and practice for an upcoming opera play. However, his friends remind him that they have planned a camping trip, so he declines but promises to help her afterwards. During the camping trip, William and his friends encounter two hippies who join them by the fire. Upon learning that William is a Neanderthal, they are both shocked and amazed. The girl asks William if he ever wishes he could go back to his own time, and he admits that he does. In the following scene, William returns to the university and assists Judy with her lines before performing in front of a live audience that night. As the play concludes, they share a kiss. However, when William tries to continue kissing after finishing their play, he is instantly rejected by Judy, leaving him feeling rejected and confused. In another place, Barbara and Julian attend a meeting to talk about the challenges Will is facing with standardized tests and how his thinking patterns don't fit into any recognized model. They discuss the idea of giving Will intensive tutoring to improve his chances for the future as he plans to reapply to college. However, Julian is shocked and angry when he discovers that Barbara withdrew Will's college application without his consent. This leads to a heated argument between them about what is best for Will's future and the path he should take in life. Barbara suggests that he should get a part-time job on the island after graduation, while Julian wants him to live with him and explore more of the world. Ultimately, the decision about Will's future will be made by William himself, as he will turn 18 in a few weeks. Meanwhile, William takes a walk along the beach with his friends, who are discussing their college applications and the universities they have been accepted to. They mention Judy, who will be attending Columbia. However, William's own future is still uncertain. He meets with his parents to discuss their expectations for him. Barbara disagrees with Julian's suggestion that William should go to university and return to his lab, but Julian believes that Will's immune system could hold the key to helping millions of people. After thinking it over, William decides to go to university, but he wants to earn his place there as a student rather than relying on any special treatment. Julian is overjoyed and proposes that William should live with him to get ready for the college entrance examination. Fast forward to the present day, Julian is reviewing William's test and is completely taken aback by the minimal improvement his son has made. He becomes angry at Sarah for not instructing him adequately and flings the paper at William's face. He then departs the house without uttering a single word. However, we see tears streaming down William's face. Sarah attempts to soothe him and reassures him that his scores are quite impressive. She takes him for a stroll in the forest. She shares stories about her own life and how her parents used to map out her future 
much like what's happening to William now. She tries to lift his spirits by discussing various subjects, including William's passion for singing. Their walk continues and takes a romantic turn when William kisses Sarah, who reciprocates his affection. In the evening, Sarah arranges flowers in a vase that William had given her, but their moment is interrupted by Julian, who inquires about their whereabouts and questions why William isn't studying. William retreats to his room and clutches the ancestral stone to his chest as he drifts off to sleep. The following morning, Sarah drives William to his university entrance examination. During the exam, William's pencil snaps once again. He looks around and notices that the other students are having no trouble with their pencils. He tries using a second pencil, which also breaks immediately. Disheartened, he decides to leave the examination room. As he wanders around the town, people gawk and chuckle at his appearance. He pays a visit to Godwin at the university, who shows him the preserved remains from which he was cloned. After a close examination, William concludes that the preserved Neanderthal doesn't belong here, and he feels the same about himself. Shortly after, Sarah contacts Barbara about William's disappearance post-exam and his unresponsiveness to phone calls. In the midst of the ongoing events, William has successfully managed to infiltrate one of Julian's academic lectures. He finds a seat in the crowd, blending in seamlessly, but is taken aback when he hears his father discussing Neanderthals and using William's picture as a reference. Julian portrays William as an unintelligent brute, a grunting savage, and a primitive caveman. This depiction deeply wounds William's feelings, prompting him to abruptly stand up and confront Julian. However, Julian defends himself by stating that he was merely performing his professional duties. William retorts by declaring Julian's work a failure, but Julian counters harshly, stating that, among all things, it is William who has turned out to be a failure. Stung by this harsh exchange, William hastily exits the lecture hall. Julian, however, follows him outside in an attempt to apologize and suggests they return home to discuss the matter further. William adamantly refuses and declares that Julian is not his father, a statement that prompts Julian to slap him. Julian tries to apologize once more and urges him to calm down. In the ensuing chaos, William drops a Neanderthal stone that he had been carrying with him. Julian attempts to retrieve it from him, but in a moment of regrettable anger, William strikes him with it. The incident quickly attracts attention, and the students begin filming the scene and labeling William as a caveman. Overwhelmed and terrified, William fled the scene, making a hasty exit from the university premises. In a different location, Sarah and Barbara persist in their search, paralleled by the police who are patrolling the vicinity. William emerges from the university, immediately catching the attention of the police. The scene is interspersed with flashbacks of William's childhood, specifically an incident where he was attacked. Simultaneously, Sarah spots William, now encircled by the police. She attempts to rush towards him, but is restrained by the law enforcement officers. The narrative then shifts to William, who seems to have made a solemn decision to join his ancestors in the afterlife. He steps forward, prompting Sarah to cry out in despair. However, her pleas fall on deaf ears as the police enclose around William's lifeless form, presumably shot for his non-compliance. The movie draws to a close. After a period of time, we see Sarah visiting the archaeological excavation site of the Neanderthal from whom William was cloned. She is accompanied by a small child, presumably the offspring of William, symbolizing the continuation of his legacy. 